Welcome to the Evening News. I'm your host for tonight, Catboy Kanhua, in the news. For the very first time in its 12-year history, YouTube was down for several hours last week, causing several thousand vloggers to make videos complaining about it and then not do anything because they had nowhere to upload them. <laughs> Out of desperation, they uploaded their videos to Vimeo, where, of course, nobody saw them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a quest for gender equality, Amazon recently announced they will be hiring a staff of gender equality officers to enforce equality regulations. <laughs> also, Amazon announced every gender equality officer will be female, so they won't have to pay them as much, and it's not something they want to waste a lot of money on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seeing as the whole thing is a completely meaningless publicity stunt, I think that quote must be one of those things where they went, Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Recently, explosives were found in a mailbox at the residence of George Soros, a liberal billionaire philanthropist and target of the far right. George Soros has been the subject of several crazy conspiracy theories presented by Breitbart News, Alex Jones, Roseanne Barr, and James Woods, all of whom claim that George Soros was a Nazi collaborator who tuned in other Jews and stole their riches to build his empire with. Hmm. This despite the fact that at the start of World War II, George Soros was nine years old. Mm -hmm. And yet <laughs> somehow an aspiring supervillain. When asked to comment on the recent uh, uh, bombing attempt with Soros, Alex Jones said, well, who would have thought spreading crazy bullshit conspiracy theories would actually have consequences? <laughs> <laughs> In Florida, a man was arrested last Sunday for groping a woman on a southwest flight bound for New Mexico. As he was being arrested, he told federal agents that... Was it, I'm sorry, missed my place here. If, was it... Uh, oh, yeah. As he was being arrested, the 49-year-old man told federal agents that President Donald Trump said it's permissible to grab women by their private parts. <laughs> <laughs> The federal agents told the man whatever the president said is meaningless because the only opinion that really matters is the judge he would be facing on Monday morning. <laughs> well, well, on Monday, the judge ruled that Supreme Court Justice Brent Kavanaugh set a new standard, and he ruled bulls of you boys, and he immediately co acquitted the man without hearing all the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> The Nebraska Tourism Commission has recently revealed a brutally honest new slogan. And this is this is real, it's actual news. Nebraska, it's not for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Nebraska Tourism Bureau is trying to charm people with honest slogans to make Nebraska more appealing. <laughs> this is mimicking the success of New York tourism slogan from the nineteen seventies, I'm not gonna lie to you, you're being stabbed. <laughs> As it turns out, many other states are also coming out with self-deprecating slogans, such as North Dakota, you can't visit all 50 states without visiting North Dakota. <laughs> or South Dakota, when North Dakota's full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Missouri, remember us? We're a state. Yeah, who Missouri. remembers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Welcome sure. to... Yeah, welcome to Arkansas. Two letters more than Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how about that? Yeah, okay. Utah, spelled backwards is Patu. Is, is that something? Mm. Is it? Patu. Oh, mm. All right. Oh, wait. And, yeah, welcome to Vernon. We're not going to win any awards for best state or nothing, but, man, have you seen New Hampshire? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Welcome to Delaware. Are we even a place? Because even we don't know. Are we a place? Is that a thing? All right. And welcome to Rhode Island. Hey, at least it'll be over quickly. <laughs> and the last one is welcome to New Jersey. Hey, look, we're not happy about it either, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, United States midterm elections come out two weeks today, actually. Liquor stores announced they'll be open an extra hour to help people cope. <laughs> <laughs> Democrats are presently ahead in the polls, but President Trump is employing the same winning strategy as of 2016 by combining racism with lying. 
<laughs> Hold on. Democrats are presently heading the polls, but President Trump is employing the same winning strategy as of 2016 by combining racism with lying. On the racism <laughs> front, there's a huge group of immigrants from Honduras who are walking with their children across Mexico. Trump has brought this up a couple of times, accusing the Democrats of embracing these immigrants who he says are destined to take your jobs and murder your families. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On the lying front, Trump has straight up accused the Democrats of actually organizing this group to come to America. Also in his tweets, as you can see here, he actually implied that there are Middle Easterners mixed in with this group, so everyone will be scared the Democrats and the Hardurans are attempting to smuggle terrorists into the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It appears Donald Trump is attempting to stuff all different fears into a great big meaty turducken of terror as you can't spell turducken without turd. <laughs> right? At the end of the tweet, Donald Trump said, I have alerted the Border Patrol and that this is an, a national emergy. Mm -hmm. Emergy. <laughs> right there. Right? Okay, emergy. Yeah, be, yeah. Right. And for the first time, Donald Trump used the emergency service on people's phones to send them this image. <laughs> oh, my God. It's an emerge. <laughs> That's the way you wish it wasn't. I'm Catboy Coonhorn.